Glory to God. Glory to God. I feel the holiness of God on you today. I feel the goodness of God. The goodness of God. The peace of God, David, that surpasses all understanding. The Bible says he will keep, Gina, your heart. He will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. That's what the sacrifice did. It guards your soul and guards your spirit in Christ so that no weapons formed against you can prosper. And any tongue, any demonic force, any tongue that rises up against you, you can condemn it. The Bible even says in Isaiah 45 that you can command ye the hand of God to move on your behalf. You don't just have the keys to the kingdom of heaven, y'all. You have the rights and privileges to the throne of God. Once you become an heir with God and a joint heir with Jesus, then everything changes. You don't just get the things of heaven. You get the attributes of God, the sovereign will of God, the very divine nature of God, the characteristics of God, the goodness of God. Only God is good. God's true peace, his joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. And he gives, you a, he gives you a blessing. He said, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. I'll stand on your behalf. And I'll cause the darkness to flee. See, we're living in a time, and the Bible says to walk circumspect. Paul, Paul the, epistle, the apostle said to, to walk circumspectly. That means evaluate your steps. Knowing that redeeming the time where you know the day is evil. We look around us and we can see it everywhere. But you know what? We may be in this world, but we don't have to be of it, do we? We don't have to be a part of it. And I don't just mean, I don't just mean by your actions and by your by your nature, by your character, by the way you live. I literally mean that you can walk, you can skirt outside the darkness. You can walk outside the destruction of man. You can move past, you can move past, you can move past the boundaries of the principalities and the powers and the rulers and the wickedness in high places. And you can walk above it. That's the, even the dung hill. That's why the, the steps of a righteous person are what? They are ordered by God and, you, and he delights in your ways. When God starts ordering your steps, when God starts ha having full right away in your life and you surrender to him and you give it all over, that's what Mary did, y'all. The, the title of the message today is called the, Mary, the Life of Mary. Mary's Life. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke, the first chapter. And I'm just going to read. To, I'm going to tell you a story today. But I'm going to read verses 26 and 27. But I want, to, I want you to see there's a journey that God has opened the door for you to have today. And that God, if you'll evaluate yourself in your heart, and you, you'll walk out of your chains. If you'll see in your heart that the only thing that God wants out of you today is a, is a loyal heart and a willing mind. The, what does that mean? To be able to receive, Gina, what God has for you in your heart and believe it, David, in your mind. Believe that God is what? That with God, nothing's too hard for him. That with man, nothing is possible. With God, all things, if I say all things, all things are possible to them that believe God is looking for a generation that will trust him, that will just simply, by faith and trust and nothing wavering, Believe in him and believe that, that, that he really can do anything. That, it, that, it's not, that nothing's too hard for him. And that if you need a ray of sunshine in your life and you're tired of walking in the darkness, all you got to do is turn your face toward God. Just turn your face toward him. Turn your face toward God. And, and the Bible says, be like a flint and thou shalt not be moved. A thousand can fall to the left and ten thousand can fall to the right. But guess what? If you've got your eyes on God, the Bible says no harm comes nigh to those who trust in him. He said if you make him your refuge and your resting place, if you rest in him today. I, God's telling me to tell y'all that there's a refreshing. If, you're, if you make him your resting place, he says no evil shall befall thee and no plague, Psalms 91. No plague shall come nigh thy dwelling place. God has charge over you right now. He's, got, he's in control. He's got charge over the angels. He's got charge over the world, over mankind. We think, we think that, 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 that the world has gone to hell in a handbag, but, it, but God's still in control. 
God's still on his throne. God's still, I told y'all, one, one breath, one, one breath from his nostrils will totally shake the bones up inside of your house and everybody will be changed. One drop of his blood and nations will be cleansed and purified. One word of his mouth and all wars will cease. They, all wars will cease. He'll, they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll be demolished from, from one end of the earth to the other. Man's, man's abilities, man's ways, man's thoughts, man's desires, all the iniquity of man, the futility of man will go. Man, all, man will wake up and he'll no longer be able to do what he used to do any longer. Why? And the wealth of the wicked, it'll be stored up for the righteous. God will take the righteous and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the person who desires to be holy and set apart and he'll take the person full of iniquity and he'll make that person become the, the righteous person's servant. So can you prove that, Ken? Yeah, it says it in the Word. It says it, I think it's Ecclesiastes 2. Let me see if I can find that for you real fast. Ecclesiastes 2.26. Come on, Holy Ghost. It said he'll take, here we go. 2.26, yeah. For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy... To a man who is, or a woman, Ecclesiastes 2.26. For God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man or woman who is good in his sight. But to the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and collecting. Why? That he may give to the man or the woman who is good before him. Though it's this, thus it shall be vanity and grasping of wind. You say, what does that mean? It means everybody thinks that they, they, everybody in the world who thinks they made themselves their own God, guess what? One day they're going to wake up from that fog that they're in, David, aren't they? And all of a sudden, they're going to realize they, didn't re they, they really weren't in all the control. They, they, they really weren't the masters of all they thought because it's all going to be gone. God can take, he's going to pluck it out of their hand. He's going to take it and say, here you go, Daniel. I'm just going to give it all right here to you. I'm going to give all my favor to you. And I'm going to give all, all, all my blessings over to you. I'm going to give you all the worth of the world. And I'm going to make those who, have, who work for it, I'm going to make them be, be without it. Nothing. And what did I say to y'all? Be without nothing. What did I say to y'all earlier about, come on, Kim, Romans 13, 11 through 4. It says, darkness is long spent. The darkness is gone. The, dark, the, the, it, the darkness has spent its weight. Spent is a pat. It's gone. Darkness has spent all of its authority, all of its power, and now God's ready to rebuke the devourer for you, say, and he's ready to push the darkness in your life and push the darkness in all of our homes, push it out of the way. Why? Because joy is coming in the morning. God's way, God's way, new beginnings are starting in our homes. New beginnings are starting in our families. There's a fresh anointing that is pouring out on, on, on those who, who have set their affections on God. I told my wife and I, Stacey and I said that this morning. I said, Lord, we just set our affections on you. We set our hearts towards you today. We set all of our love and all of our desires towards you, God, so that you'll do what? So that you'll make a way where there seems to be no way. So that you'll be the peace in the midst of the storm. You'll be our safe harbor, our righteous rock. And if we just, one of my favorite scriptures is Isaiah 26 and 3. It says, thou will have perfect peace, who what? Whose mind stays on him because you trust in him. You're, you're looking for a change. You're looking for the world to change around you. You don't have to change. You don't have to adapt to the world. Guess what? The world will adapt to you if you walk in the light. The world will, the world will back away from you, and God will acknowledge his glory. He will acknowledge his authority. He will acknowledge his power, his wisdom inside of you. And what he puts together... Okay, nobody changed. Nobody can put it asunder. Once he starts to work inside of you, once he, once he writes it down, he said, you know what? It cannot be reversed. I think it's Isaiah 43 that says, I have called you by name, and you are mine. Though the, though the world begins to swell, though the floodwaters come, Gina, guess what? They're not going to overcome you. Though the flame, the fire comes to the world, it's not going to quit you. It's not going to burn you. God has purified you and set you apart for his glory. And you're looking for an opportunity. Some of, you, some of you today that are sitting here, some of you listening to me right now on this video, who will listen to this video, says that you wish that you could just sometimes go inside and close your door and shut yourself off to the world behind you. But let me tell you something. Look up. Look up today. Why? Because your redemption is drawing nigh. The same way that Mary was praying for revival on her behalf of her family You've been praying for revival and praying for release on your family. 
God is getting ready to open up the windows of heaven, and he's going to give it to you right, and he's going to give it back to you today. Pressed down and shaken together and running over. You say, how do you know, Ken? Because I, I know that I know that I know that our Redeemer living. And, and I know what the Abraham said. He said, I counted those things that were not. That's what it says in, I think it's in Corinthians, the fourth chapter. He said, I can't, Abraham was called a friend of God. Because he said he counted those things that were not as though they already were. If you start receive, you gotta, it's like it's like giving birth, y'all. You gotta conceive <laughs> in order to receive. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. And so if you conceive what God has for you, then you then you'll begin to see it. If you conceive it in your heart, you'll begin to see it in your mind that God's ready to, to make you more than you've ever been before in your entire life. He's ready, He's ready to make you an overcomer. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of his testament. Make you strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's what the entire life of, of Mary was actually all about. Was, was allowing God's anointing to break forth in the light of those who chose to believe the impossible. Chose to believe the, the crazy, the supernatural, the the. the the, the above and beyond, the exceeding the above and beyond anything you could ask or think. What Paul says in, in Corinthians chapter 2, I have not seen and ear hath not heard and neither has entered, that's conception, neither has entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. God's got so many blessings. He's got so much more. you got so much more, David, that God wants to do with you. So much more potential in your life that God wants to release on you so that you can be more than you could ever even imagine and your life could be totally transcended into a into a to a living epistle walking and you say well some types that people tell me well again I don't want to know the power of God I don't I don't I don't want to know what it means to walk in the living epistle I don't want to know what's coming down the road that's a, that's okay you won't then you don't have to you you don't have to if you if you want it you can but if you don't you don't have to God God will just use somebody else just like Mary and I'm going to show you that today God only uses those who what? Have a, a, have a, a, have a pure, clean hands and a pure heart before him. So he says right here in, in, in Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Now in the sixth month of the, of the angel Gabriel was sent by God. See, when it's time, when it's time, when it's time, God will send. God will send a messenger for you. God will give you a word. God will send somebody who has an anointing on them. And he, he, he used angels then, but now he can use people. He can use you. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is residing and living on the inside of you. So God, can, I'm here to give you a word today. That he sent the angel. The angel, the angel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To what? To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. The virgin's name was Mary. I, th I find it very interesting that the, that the writer here, that he makes sure... That everybody knows what's going on. He makes sure that not only is, is, is Mary called of God because God's sending a messenger to speak to her, but he makes sure that everybody knows that she's a virgin. That, 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 the, that Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 9, David, is going to be fulfilled. That God makes sure that, that, that his son is going to be born of a virgin of the bloodline of David and that there's no mistake, that there's nothing hidden there's no hanky-panky going on up in here. There, I don't know where that came from, Lord. There's, 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 nothing, there's nothing being done under the table, the Bible says in James chapter 1. that every, They said, you know what it says? That every good and every perfect gift, you know what? It says, every, everybody say every good. Every good and every perfect gift comes from what? From the Father of lights, where? Where there is no shadow or turning. There's no smoke in mirrors. There's no deception involved. God's always out front with you. If you, that's why I said he loves a loyal heart and a willing mind. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if your heart is open to God, and you, and you make yourself available to God, God will make Himself available to you. And it, it's all it really boils down to is all of you for all of Him. Who are you in love with? I told, so I told one of my relatives the other night. Who are you in love with? That's all that, that it boils down to. Are you, are you in love with yourself? Or are you in love with Him? That's really all. It's, in the end, that's all that's going to matter. That who have you really? Set your affections on. The Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart is. That's where your intimacy lies. That's where all the secrets lie. So you're sitting here today, and you say, well, again, that you, you, you're thinking like, well, Mary, was, when she was praying, all she, she, all, all she wanted, she just, 
The, the only prayer she wanted was just a miracle for her family. What was Mary doing that God called her to do one of the most monumental things in the entire Bible, to be one of the greatest women, most anointed women of the Bible? Some people say, oh, well, God, she was born. No, no. It was immaculate conception in the fact that God, she conceived, she was a virgin that conceived of the Holy Child through the, through the Holy Spirit. But Mary wasn't born, was it created just to have like some, some doctors teach, just to have Jesus. No, she had to, I told you last week, she had to earn it. She, she had to earn what she did. She had, to, she had to, people say, oh, you don't earn Yes, you do. You work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You walk holy and set apart unto the Lord. From a very young age, Mary, somebody had to teach her well. Because from a very young age, Mary understood what it was like to keep herself unto the Lord. Mary understood what it was like to make him what? Your, his first love. And I always tell all the ladies, I said, when you're looking for a man and looking for a godly man, the first thing you do is, the first thing you do is, is you make sure that your first love is, is Jesus. You make sure that he's in your heart first, that, he, that, that, that nothing can take his place. Because when God sends the godly man, he'll have the same kind of love for you that Jesus did. Oh, mm, 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 mm. The Bible says, how does the Bible say? Paul say in the book of Ephesians to husbands to love their wives like Christ loved the church. With what? With the washing of the water of the word. When you when you when you when you wash your love when you wash your wife in the water of the word and she's and she's whew, I don't even know why I'm saying this right now, but she's sanctified in the Holy Spirit because of the because of the prayers and the lifestyle you live. See how does how does love go? It goes from the top down. When your first love is Jesus, men, and all of a sudden you you have your your, your your all your affections are set on Him. Guess what? That same affection, that same communication. That same agape, not, I'm not talking about filial love. I'm not talking about that natural love, Haley, that natural that attraction or intimacy that men and women have with each other. I'm talking about God. John says that agape love, this is perfect love that casts out all fear. When you're walking in the perfect love of God, that love flows down into you and it flows into her. And it flows and it, and it anoints her. When it anoints her, then she can do it. She can become the helpmate. So a lot of men would listen to me. They, they'd understand what I'm saying. I talk to a lot of men, Gina, and, I, and I tell, when I tell them outside of the Holy Spirit, my wife, and that she is, my wife is my best friend, they go, really? Really? I say, absolutely. Absolutely. We, I, I don't trust anybody more than I trust her. See, men find a hard time of just letting go and letting God be God on the inside of them and realizing that when you lay your head down at night, them old guys, them old, them old dudes, you think that you're posse, that you think is going to hang, going to be there for you when you, well, all the time. Hey, when when the when the when the poo poo hits the fan and all that and everything, you look up and all the dust is flying everywhere. You and you turn around, ain't nobody standing there. And, and all of a sudden, the dust clears. The only one's going to be standing there is who? I say the same thing about funerals. I'm just going with the Holy Spirit today. It, when you come to the funeral and you're in, the only people going to be there is those who love you, your loved ones, your wife, your family, your friend, friend, and God. Everybody else, the rest of the world will do what? It'll just keep going on, moving on. Well, we, that's why they love the rich young ruler, y'all. He had a lot of money and had a lot of stuff to give away. So everybody followed him around as long as he carried a lot of riches around with him. But boy, I guarantee you, once he stopped giving, what would everybody, everybody, everybody scatter, wouldn't he? It's the same thing in your life. You got to make sure you got to make sure you set your affections in the right place. You put him first. You always last, man. Him first. Your wife next, and your kids, and then you. You way on down the line. You way on down the total pole. But once you can decide to do that, then God can set your house in order. That, isn't that what the word says? Get your house in order? For a man who cannot, I don't, I'm just going where the God's telling me. A man who cannot take care of his wife or his family is worse than an infidel. That's what the word says, worse than an unbeliever. So once you get your heart right with God, everything else, everything else will line up and take care of itself. See, Mary had a godly man that she was betrothed to. <laughs> a man. That, that God had given her that, that you don't hear you don't even hear you don't even hear him talk at all in the in the Bible, but you just by the things that are said about him, you know he's a righteous and holy man. I'll get to him down the road. He's a righteous and holy man. But Mary's sitting here praying, and and you said, well, all I want, all the only prayer I want, I just want you know nothing more. I just want a miracle for my family this year. All I want is a miracle in my home. I just just a simple miracle. That I can bring joy to all my loved ones. There's nothing wrong with that, is it? 
just just to find just to find joy in my house and and and, and watch my house just my what did we say earlier that, that that everybody could truly be what they could just truly be happy everybody could be happy everybody could have their needs met but see god has a different plan for you so god you mean god don't want me to be happy absolutely he does he absolutely wants he absolutely wants to give back to you pressed down he's shaking together running over but that's not the only thing See, it's not that he just wants to, it's not just that he just wants to provide a miracle for your family only, but he wants, listen to me, y'all. He wants you to be the miracle. He, want, that's, he wanted Mary to be the miracle. I want you to see yourself as Mary today. Even men, he, wanted, he wants you to be the miracle. The miracle is actually, the miracle is inside of you and me. The miracle is, 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 the, is, the, is, is the living presence of God that is inside of you and I today. And the reason why God wants you to be the miracle because the, by you being the miracle and by miracles taking place in your life, it allows others around to see you, so, to, to see the glory of God so that you can, they can believe. It allows them to see so that they can believe. That's the why the word says that signs and wonders, David, follow them that believe. Because when signs and what when, when, when signs and wonders and miracles begin to take place in your life and you become the miracle, guess what happens? It causes Jeremiah, um, what is Jeremiah 29 and, uh, and 11 to occur. It causes a hope and a future. It, it brings hope. Why? Because when I see miracles happening inside of you, it gives me hope. Because if they're happening for you, what does it mean? They can happen for me too. They can happen for me too. So not only does God want miracles to happen in your home, but he wants you to be a miracle for, as, as in Mary's case, he wants you to be a miracle for all of Israel and all of the world too as well. I'm talking about crazy kind of miracle working faith. The kind of faith that moves mountains. God-like kind of faith. That his faith that transforms and changes the world. That turns the world up, anoints you to turn the world upside down and changes people's lives forever. Let your light, said, let your light so shine before men and declare my good works in you that they what? That they may in turn turn around. See, God's in a turning around position. That they may turn around and do what? And glorify the Father in heaven. Did you know this? It says this in John, John the, the first chapter, John 1 verse 9. Let me see if I can find that for you real fast. That, that everybody in this room has a light, and has an impartation of God's light. Listen to this. John 1 verse 9. And I'm just going how the Holy Ghost wants me to go. He says in verse 9 that the true light comes which gives light to every man and woman in the world. So there's a true light in the glory of Christ, in the glory of God that comes and it, and it imparts light to every person in the world. Everybody in this room, everybody that's ever been created that knows the glory of God, that walks in the glory of God, guess what you have? Just like you have a social security number, you have a distinct light on the inside of you that's been imparted inside of you for not only God to see, but the entire world to see. So that the glory of God can shine on you. So that when you walk, I just prayed it over just a minute ago. When you walk in the light as God is light, your spirit, see that's why God chose Mary. She walked in the light. She wasn't even born again, y'all. But she walked in the light. Why? Because the Bible says God's word is true. Let every man be a liar that God can't lie. All of his promises are yes and amen. He said, if you, if, he said if, if, you, if, if you walk in, the, if you abide in me, even as my word abides in you, then what does it say? Then you can ask what you will. Why? Why? So that the Father will be glorified. Everything's about God being glorified through the Son. So if you seek God with your whole heart, you know what will happen? You'll find him. If you ask it, it shall be, be, be given. If you seek, you shall find. If you knock, it shall be opened. God's looking for individuals that will do what? That will pursue God in the beauty of his holiness. 
and the power of his resurrection. You say, what caused Mary to be chosen? She pursued God with a crazy kind of love. Huh. It says that in, 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 I think it's Romans. Romans 12, it says to have a white hot fervency for God. Shun evil. Turn away, turn away from all, what is it? Is it Romans 12, Lord? Turn away from all that is evil. Shun evil and pursue that which is good. Pursue what is holy and good in God. Turn, turn away from all that is unholy in the sight of the Lord. Let me see if I can find that for you. I think it's Romans 12. I think it's verse 16, verse 9. Yeah, let us live without hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil and cling. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Cling to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with a brotherly love. In honor, doing what? Giving preference. That's why I was talking about the husband and the wife just a minute ago, wasn't I? Giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence, but fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. Romans 12, verse 9, it goes around and down to verse 16. But serving refusing evil, clinging to that which is good. If you choose the goodness of God, then God will give you good. God will give you his holiness. God will give you his nature. He will give you his righteousness. He will turn the world upside down for you and transform lives around you just simply because you want to be good in him. Because you want to be good in him. And if you let God be God inside of you, then you know what he'll do? All your enemies will be scattered. And if you're good in him, you know what'll happen? God will start doing, God will start doing miracles that don't make sense. Miracles that are that are out of this world. That's why the, that's why the, uh, Solomon said, Trust in the Lord how? With all of your heart, Proverbs 3. Lean not upon your own understanding, but in all of thy ways do what? Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He'll make miracles in your life. Miracles that don't make sense. Miracles that, are, that, that you can't even reason and understand. That defy logic. Huh. When they even defy the laws of nature. A woman having a child without having intimacy with a man. That the Holy Ghost just comes upon her and boom, she conceives. The Son of God. That, that, that's not logical. That doesn't make sense. You see, God is anything but logical and sensible. Huh? He's in the business of doing the miraculous. He's in the business of doing great and mighty things. Things that, 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 that don't... That he, doesn't, he doesn't walk in the... He defies the boundaries of mankind. <laughs> he defies gravity. He doesn't. He walks on the waters, y'all. He holds the, the waters of the earth in the, in the palms of his hands. All, the Bible says in Isaiah, all your names are engraved on the palms of his hands. So every time you pray, your names come up in the, in the presence of God. His thoughts of you are more than can be numbered. More than what? Hey, the sands of the sea. So not this is this is what I, this is what God told me about that. Not only does God this is this is miraculous in itself. Not only does God think about you more times in the sands of the sea, but individually, but He can also think about seven billion people. He can think about all of them at the same time. More times a day than the sands of the sea, and, and never even break a sweat. He can he can, you can't make one hair black or one white, but God can. You can't change one inch to your stature, but God can. He said, if you seek ye first, what? My kingdom and my righteousness, then all things will be added to you. So if you believe in the impossible, if you not only, no, let me change that, y'all. If you believe, not only believe in the impossible, but if you receive, let me go one step further. If you conceive the impossible, did you know during intimacy, this is it's okay, it's scientific. I'll just use the word seed, okay? Instead of instead of a cell, I'll use the word seed. During intimacy that a, between a man and a woman, that a man passes between 80 million to 300 million of his seeds at one time to a woman to fertilize her egg during intercourse. How many does it take to take conception, y'all? 
main conception. Three, 80 million to 300 million. How many does it take? What'd you say? One. Just one. That's all it takes, just one. That's how powerful God is. You don't take just one. So if you can, if you, so if you, when I said, when I said God has imparted everybody a light inside of them, it makes you distinct that you can do what Isaiah 60 said, arise and shine. You got to know when it's coming, y'all. You just took that, you, you moved that where I had it originally, or they moved it right here, Lord. He blocked it from me just a minute ago, so I'd say it right here. In conception, you got to know when, when it's coming. You got to, Isaiah 60 says, arise and shine, why? For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. You got to be ready to, to receive from God when his glory rises up, when the anointing of the Holy Ghost rises up over you. When the glory of God moves on you. When he moves on you, and, and you gotta you you gotta be you gotta be at a place, y'all. You you those who are listening to me on this video, you gotta be at a place where you've been around God enough to know to know what the anointing is, to know what the glory of God is. That you've been around him enough, that you set your affection on him enough, that when it comes, you know to stand still. Did, did the word say that? Stand be still and what? No. 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 That means knowledge. No, knowledge. That means you've had a, 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 a you've had past contact. Contact that you've had past relations. Know that I'm God. Know when God's showing up. Know when He's coming, David. Know when He's about to pass a seed, I'm a, a seed of perfection over you. Another miracle's coming your way. That you can see it, that you don't just believe it here, but you get it inside of here. So that when conception takes place, then the birth, the miracle will come that will be born and come forth. See, how can such an event take place? How did it take place with Mary? kind of going backwards and going backwards in this but I, but I felt like God told me to tell it this way how can it how can you know when it takes place like with Mary when the when the when the when the cat when the catalyst or the the catalyst for Mary or the igniter becomes what your ability to believe and receive the word of God when you can receive what God is telling you then the miracle can be born inside of you. Now Mary could have said no. And if she wouldn't, you know what? God would have went and found someone else. As the life of Mary goes, so goes our life. God can go find somebody else, but he's looking for somebody to believe and receive it at the same time. So Gabriel shows up. Gabriel shows up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move fast. Gabriel shows up, y'all. And you know what? I think the Holy Ghost is telling me just to move, just to stop with you right there. Because I don't know that you can take much more of it today. Are you with me? Okay. All right, I'll tell a little bit. Gabriel shows up, y'all. And he shows up. Just think about it. I want you to put yourself in Mary's place. Gabriel shows up and you, man, I ain't never seen an angel before before this time. Never seen a pot move of the Holy Ghost, you Never seen God that she's just praying for her family. She's praying for a simple miracle for her home. Just God bring joy inside of her house. And all the burden, all the darkness is going on in, in Israel right now because they're bound by the Roman government. And all of a sudden he shows up and he says, Rejoice! <laughs> Hallelujah. Rejoice, highly favored one. For God is with you, and you are blessed among women. And when Mary sees this big old dish, she goes, What? Rejoice! She was Rejoice. The Bible says she was greatly troubled. You know what that word troubled means? She was terrified. Rejoice about what? Yeah, hey, heaven's all been talking about you, Mary. We've been waiting a long time. Angels are dancing. The Holy Spirit's, the Holy Spirit's doing the jig all around heaven right now. Everybody, everybody's just, every, the, the noise is buzzing. God's son is coming. You don't know it, but he done picked you. He already done picked you. He said, you, God's with you can rejoice today because you're favored. You're favored among all women, and God's with you. What do you mean God's with me? You're blessed among women. Women are going to dedicate their children to, to your son one day, and they're going to they're going to be they're going to call him blessed. And you're going to be remembered from time to time because, because you are the mother. When a mother thinks of her child, she's going to think about what you did in order to give her child the right to be blessed and dedicated to him. So rejoice. And, he, and she says, 
She said, what kind of salute, what kind of greeting is this? Rejoice in what, 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 what? First thing we think is what? What's going to be required of me? What do you, what do you mean rejoice in what? God's with me for what reason? What's he with me? What is he about to do to me? Why am I blessed among women? What makes me any different than anybody else? Wait a minute. What am I going to have to go through for this all to happen? And then Gabriel says what? He says, he knew, he says, don't be afraid, Mary. God's with you. Then he, then he gives her a gut punch. Then he punches her in the gut. I want, you, I want you to see something here. Then he punches her in the gut and he says, for thou shalt what? Thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Anytime something great happens into your life, I'm talking about conception today. Anytime something great happens in your life, whether it's physical, whether ladies, you're a young man and a young woman to come together and you're having a child, that are, are it's spiritual and a miracle is about to come your way. Conception is, you're always going to conceive it in your womb, whether it be spiritual, whether it be physical, you're going to receive it in your spiritual womb or your physical womb. That's the way that a miracle, it always takes place. God always imparts his glory inside of you. When the miracle takes place, whether it be a, the miracle of a newborn child or whether it be a, the miracle of a, of, of a newborn event occurring in your life, it's always going to take place in your womb. What is your womb? Your womb's in your spirit. Your soul, the soul is part of your man. In the depths of your heart. Why? Because where your treasure is, thank you, Holy Ghost, that's where your heart is also. Where your treasure is, that's where God God always visits you. Where, where, where the, the things are that you love the most, right inside your heart. Because that's where he wants to make his sanctuary. So she, he says, he said, thou shalt conceive in thy womb a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, which is the Savior of all the world, or Emmanuel, God with us. And he shall be, he shall be great, called the son of the highest. She's not even here. She's not even listening anymore. <laughs> she ain't got fast. She's about to conceive a son. He's called the son of the highest. He shall be great, and he shall sit upon his father's throne, David. He shall rule over the house of Jacob, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, ain't that a snap, Mary? Aren't you about to jump, Mary? Glory to God. God's going to put a child inside of you. Next thing Mary's thinking, all of a sudden, her hands start shaking. He's going to do what? What did he just say? I shall conceive a what? A son. He already knows it's a boy. He's already given it a name. She's not even thinking yet. She doesn't, her mind done went all the way out of left field. She's like, oh, my. What is my family going to do? They're going to be disgraced. I heard a man say that this morning. That even though everybody knew that he knew, even, the, even those who needed to know, the knowers knew. It talks about that in the book of Romans. That even though everybody knew that Mary did have to walk, in or, 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 John chapter 8, Mary had to walk with the thought in mind that everybody perceived her as a fornicator. Her entire life. Because she was supposed to be, a, she was a virgin that was married, betrothed to, betrothed to a, a, a righteous man, Joseph. What was her friends going to think? Oh, my God, they had the right to stone me to death. You know, they could have took her out of the street and stoned her. Oh, what is Joseph? What is Joseph? What is Joseph going to do? He has the right to publicly divorce me and make an open spectacle of me. Oh, Joseph, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. What is that seal that used to come on all the time? Candid camera. Is there a candid? Is there somebody with a camera over here behind me? Is candid camera here? Somebody trying to pump me? I've never even known a man. How in the world can I have a child? I'm all right now. How can I have a child? Anytime a miracle's coming your way, she said, she said, how can this be? This is how it be. This is how it can be. Anytime a miracle's coming your way, in your entire, anytime you, you, walk, you, you, you reach a new place in your life where you walk in a new level in the kingdom of God, you walk in a new place in the glory of God, anytime God uh, transcends you into uh, or, or forms you into a new vessel, to a living epistle, to where you move from glory to glory and faith to faith, this, the same thing happened to Mary. This is what happens to you and I. She said, how can this be? And, and, and he tells her. He said, the Holy Spirit shall come upon thee. 
and the power of the Most High, Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place shall what? Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the Most High shall what? God himself shall overshadow thee. And this holy thing, this holy child that should be born, shall be called the Son of God. Let me change the words to that. This holy thing, that should, this miracle that shall be born in you, shall be called the glory of God. So every time God does something, it happens that the exact same way that happened to Mary, it happens to you. And then God will always give you a way out to it. I'm going to show you that next week. He'll always give you a way out. He'll always give you a chance to choose, and he'll always have another miracle. He'll always already have another miracle in, in play so that you can see it. And you say, why? Because we're sheep. And what does sheep do? Eat and follow. So if you eat and follow, you got to what? Because you can't see where you're going, you got to have instruction. You got to have uh, uh, discipline, and you, and you got to have illustration. You got There's got to be an illustration. He says. So she said. So listen. He said. He, she, she's. Well, how can all this happen? Well, listen. You know. The, you know your relative. You know Elizabeth. You know the one that her her, father, her husband Zacharias is the high priest. You know what? The one that's old. That is past the past the stage of even childbearing, but she's been barren all of her le all of her lives. Guess what? She's six months pregnant right now with the full rudder of Christ. She's six months pregnant with John Gabriel's. For with God, nothing is impossible to those who believe. So he was giving her a way to understand. And she says something here. Everybody thinks it's just an act of faith. But what she's also saying here, she's saying, okay. I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to challenge this word. It's going, to, it's going to be according to thy word. Whatever you say, if, if this is true, if this, it's like a prophecy. Somebody gives you a prophecy or somebody gives you a word of knowledge. How do you know, how do you know if a prophecy or a word of knowledge is true? When it comes to pass. When it comes to pass. And so, so she says, be it unto, she says, behold, the maid servant of the Lord. Here I am. All right. I receive it. I, I'm receiving it. I'm going to tell you when conception takes place next week. I receive it. Behold, made servant of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the Bible said the angel Gabriel left. So not only was she saying by faith, okay, let it be. Let it be exactly what you're saying. Let it be what you're saying. But also, I'm going to go check this thing out. And if it is what you say it is, then, that, then everything you said is going to come to pass just like you said it was. Because God, if, if Elizabeth is what, she, is what you said she is, then, then, then God will always, he'll do what? He'll always order your steps, what? Signs and wonders and miracles follow the belief. He'll always, he'll always give you illustrations in front of you to what? To let you know. To, to let you know that, that your, your salvation, your, the answer to your prayers are coming your way. He'll order your steps. He'll order your steps. Stand still. Not just know that he's God. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He won't ever trick you. He'll always make it plain for you so that when, you, when, it, when it happens, you, you'll feel what? You'll feel, you'll feel peace on the inside of you. That You know what? That this is God. This is what, and sometimes you've got to take steps of uncertainty. Sometimes you've got to do things you may not want to do. Sometimes you've got to act out of your comfort zone. And you've got to, get up, you've got to step outside the, the normal things you wouldn't do. But you know what? It's like every time I preach. You know, people say, oh, can you? It's like, hey, my knees knock every time before I get ready to preach. And my heart does a little pit, little pitter-patter. It's like, why? Not because, not because I'm afraid of talking to you, but because I want to make sure that it's holy. I want to make sure it's right. But every time, he always says to me, David, he says, he said, open your mouth, and he said, I will fill it with my words. That's an act of faith. That's an act of faith and trust and nothing wavering. That what God said, that what God did before, guess what? He'll do it again. He'll do it again. He'll do it again and again and again. So I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you, I don't, I don't I never read it anywhere in there. Because the, the, the Bible is just a, just a snippet, just a synopsis of all the things that God's done. And, but I can guarantee you, Mary had already had some things, some illustrations, some events occur to her, whether it be in the synagogue when she's praying or in her life that pointed to this moment in time. She was already had some smaller moments, some smaller miraculous moments in her life that, 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 that gave her what? I mean, you think about it. She's going to, 
she's gonna she's gonna be impregnated by the Holy Ghost, and and you walking around all these natural people say, oh Joseph, uh uh, -uh. old girl done, done done did you wrong? Well, Joseph had to think. I'll show you that in a minute. I'll show you why. I'll show you that next week, a couple of weeks. Why 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 Gabriel came? And I'll tell you why Gabriel came and spoke to her face to face. But Joseph he only spoke to him in his heart. God always makes a way where there is no way. He's always, and he never leaves. He, he's not the author of confusion. He's peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, I just lift you up right now. And I give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. And I pray, God, that, that not only do they walk out of your change today, but God, you take this word and you send it forth and you send it to their loved ones. You send it to those Lord, I've been sending it out to every week. And, and, and there's, a, there, there, there's an, an anointing that just leads them. They, 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 there's a calling of the voice of the Holy Spirit that woos them into wanting to hear, to make another step, to make another a, a child, to, to, to take a chance and trust you, God, one more time, all over again, knowing that they're tired of all the same things happening in their lives, that all they want to do is just find out what it means to, to find true joy in you. And they, and they just take one step of faith into your presence, God, and they're changed. They're changed. I, 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 I'm telling everybody here today, you, maybe you get in your cars, you walk in and say, God, I, 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 I'm trusting, I'm taking a step of faith in you, and I believe I'm changed. And when you do, get, you, you all get the, the, the waves of the Holy Ghost start moving. They'll come in waves, and they'll start moving all over you. And you'll see at different points of interest in your life in, in just the next few days, next few months, you'll see a, a brand new path being opened up for you to walk on, a path that, that only the Holy Ghost can lead you into. And so I just lift you up today, God, and I give you all the glory and all the honor hmm, and all the praise in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, in advance that you hear us.